Hey friends, my recent discussions about concepts of evolution has brought up the usual claims that everything I've described is due to design. That sure, I may have described some forces that act on living organisms, but that there are other forces, mysterious forces, vaguely defined forces at work. It's all about intelligent design. What is intelligent design? That's my question, and I've never received a satisfactory answer. I've listened to many who claim to have the answer, but they never do. Let's look at a couple of examples. So here's Ben Stein being interviewed by R.C. Sproul about the movie Expelled. Stein is representative of your typical believer. Not very bright, not at all well informed, even grossly ignorant, but stuffed full of emotional prejudices. Yeah, I think your your uh, audience may may be interested to know what intelligent design is in the first place, and it, it is the hypothesis that life did not originate randomly, not by random mutation and natural selection, but uh, that there was some design involved by all power by an all powerful designer, and that. Uh, we didn't just originate as uh, human beings from lightning striking a mud puddle, that there was some design involved. Notice a couple of points he makes. He insists several times that life isn't random, that life couldn't have arisen by pure chance. This is a non-objection. No one argues that it did. See my previous video about how selection isn't about chance. His premise does not support his conclusion which is that life is the product of an all-powerful designer. You don't get to do this. Saying something is designed by a designer is circular and lacking in any evidential support. My favorite refutation comes from a 19th century poet, Percy Shelley. Design must be proved before a designer can be inferred. The matter in controversy is the existence of design in the universe, and it is not permitted to assume the contested premises and thence infer the matter in dispute. Insidiously to employ the words contrivance, design, and adaptation before these circumstances are made apparent in the universe, thence justly inferring a contriver, is a popular sophism against which it behoves us to be watchful. I should also add that the pro-ID proponents are much, much more careful to avoid saying anything about the designer than is Stein. ID is a gimmick to get around restrictions on teaching religion in schools, so they'd rather not short-circuit that whole ploy by saying all-powerful designer, which is a proxy for God. Let's finish up this clip. And uh, this, to me, seems so obvious, so intuitively apparent, so compelling, that it stunned me when Walt Ruloff, the producer, brought me evidence that uh, noted academics had been fired, lost their grants, lost their offices, been hounded out of their communities for just questioning the idea that there could have been anything except randomness in the universe. There are a couple of twists here. He claims that design is intuitive and obvious, that ID proponents have been persecuted for their beliefs, and that once again, you aren't allowed to question the idea that there could have been anything except randomness in the universe. Asserting that design is obvious is begging the question. As Shelley said, the question is whether there is design in the universe. You don't get to just assume it as Stein does. And intuition isn't evidence. Claims of persecution are typical Christian paranoia. It's not true. It is true, however, that in order to teach biology, you need to understand evolution, and you will be unemployable at any credible university if you express such ignorance of a central subject in biology as Mr. Stein demonstrates here. By, for instance, asserting once again that you don't get to question the existence of non-random phenomena in the sciences. That's simply nonsense, palpable nonsense. I assert that there are many non-random forces in evolution, and yet somehow I have not been fired yet. Okay, so Stein is not credible. He's a not very good actor with delusions of scientific competence. Maybe we should check in with one of the heavy hitters of the ID movement, 
a philosopher who has written big, heavy books on ID, like Stephen Meyer. Here's his argument for design. Bill Gates has said the same, that DNA is like a computer program, but far more advanced than any we've ever created. We know from experience that computer programs are built by programmers. I gotta stop it right there. This is a key argument for ID creationists, the argument by faulty analogy. Computer programs are designed and created by programmers. Therefore, by analogy, DNA must be designed and created by DNA designers. I'm afraid Bill Gates is simply wrong. DNA is not like a computer program. This is a painfully common approach. I've got to show you someone else who makes exactly the same argument, and you'll see how flawed it is. See the building on the corner? The big one on the corner. Okay, see the buildings on the corners? Okay, how were they? How do you know there was builders? Yeah, the building can't build itself, can it? The building is proof there was a builder. You don't need to see the builder. You know there was a builder because the building's there. Painting? When you see a painting, how do you know there was a painter? Yeah, because paintings don't paint themselves. Creation? Creative. Simple logic. We know God exists because of the genius of his hand has been displayed through his creation. See what I mean? This is the argument from flawed analogy. So Comfort says, the building is proof there was a builder. A painting is proof there was a painter. Meyer was saying that a program is proof there was a programmer. Therefore, creation is proof there was a creator? These are all flawed tautologies. We know how buildings, paintings, and programs are made. We have positive evidence of the mechanisms that generate them. The question is still about how things were made where we lack evidence of an intelligent being behind them. You can't simply assume. When we see a stone on the ground, we don't assume it was shaped by a personified stonemaker and placed with intent by a personified stone placer. In some cases, it may have been. But that does not mean that in all cases, every stone on earth was sculpted and put into position by an intelligent artist with intent. There are natural forces that can move rocks. You can't just claim that because one class of objects is pers purposefully created by people, therefore all objects were purposefully created by a person-like intelligence. Stephen Meyer and Ray Comfort are pretty much indistinguishable from one another, which ought to embarrass Meyer. They're both using the same flawed logic. The one difference, I think, is that Meyer is aware that he's making a bad argument. He knows he's got to have some reason to think that some natural objects are designed intentionally. Unfortunately for him, all he has is bald assertion. We know more generally that information always arises from conscious activity, as one early uh, information scientist who applied information science to molecular biology pointed out. The creation of new information is habitually associated with conscious activity. I have to interrupt him here. He says, information always arises from conscious activity. But in his quote, note that habitually is not synonymous with always. Notice what he did, though. His argument rests entirely on assertion of an absolute. In his book, Signature in the Cell, he does this repeatedly, and I have to show you a remarkable quote from that doorstop that reiterates it. Pay close attention to the word invariably. He uses it three times. So Meyer says, What humans recognize as information certainly originates from thought from conscious or intelligent human activity. Our experience of the world shows that what we recognize as information invariably reflects the prior activity of conscious and intelligent persons. Experience shows that large amounts of specified complexity or information, especially codes and languages, invariably originate from an intelligent source, from a mind or personal agent. Experience teaches that whenever large amounts of specified complexity or information, 
are present in an artifact or entity whose causal story is known, invariably creative intelligence, intelligent design, played a role in the origin of that entity. None of this is true. It's garbage through and through. He has no evidence that information is invariably produced only by intelligent activity, and all it takes is one counterexample to prove him wrong. For example, we know multiple ways to increase information in the genome without intelligent intervention. Unequal crossing over, a fairly common genetic error in which two chromosomes are misaligned and exchange strands of DNA, will produce duplications of information in one of the chromosomes. By any definition from information theory, this represents an unguided increase in information. QED, Meyer is wrong. Here's a more specific example, the evolution of corticosteroid hormone receptors. Ancient fish 450 million years ago had one generic receptor for a corticosteroid precursor, deoxycorticosterone. It also bound aldosterone and cortisol, two more modern hormones, so it was simply a sloppy receptor with a loose fit. This receptor was duplicated and then, over time, by small changes in their amino acid sequence, their specificity was tightened up, so now one only binds cortisol, a stress hormone and regulator of sugar metabolism, and the other binds only aldosterone, which regulates blood pressure and salt homeostasis. Every step of this transformation of the primitive receptor has been analyzed and documented, and none of them require intelligent forces, magic, or any phenomena not already known to exist in the natural world. And that's where Meyer fails again. Let's listen to him continue. Hang on to your butts, people, because he's going to blow us away with an ironic comment. Now, this is a very significant <clears throat> observation because one of the key rules in scientific reasoning about the past in the historical sciences is that we should uh, look for presently acting causes, that our knowledge of the cause and effect structure of the world in the present should guide our inferences about the past. This is the famous dictum, the uniformitarian dictum of Charles Lyell, one of Darwin's mentors. And his idea was that when we're trying to explain the past, we should not invent causes, exotic causes, the effects of which we've never seen, but instead we should explain the past by reference to causes that we see presently in operation. And when I was studying Lyell and Darwin and the methods of the historical sciences during my graduate work in England, I asked myself the question, what is the presently acting cause of digital information? The pres and I submit that it is intelligence. We know that from re uniform and repeated experience, the basis of all knowledge. He says, when trying to explain the past, we should not invent causes, exotic causes, but instead we should explain the past by reference to causes that we presently see in operation. That is correct. Avoid exotic convoluted explanations with additional entities beyond the minimum unless you have specific evidence for that exotic cause. This is a pretty good summary of our dismissal of intelligent design. They ignore mundane natural mechanisms that we know exist in the present and had to have existed in the past to, as to assert the existence of an all-powerful superbeing, an exotic cause for which they have no evidence. So he concludes, what is the presently existing cause of digital information? It is intelligence. Wrong again. I agree that intelligence is a presently existing cause of digital information, but it isn't the only cause. Meyer uses the phrase digital information to conjure up associations with computer programming in the minds of his audience. It's a misleading example. The only intelligent beings who create digital information of that sort are human beings, and they did not exist a half million years ago, or a hundred million years ago, or a billion years ago. And if he's trying to imply that all powerful, intelligent beings did it, no gods have written any computer programs in the present, so that's out. If he's trying to imply that chains of nucleotides are his digital information, then I've got even more bad news. 
the primary creator of digital information of that sort are DNA and RNA polymerase, which are not intelligent at all. The reasoning behind intelligent design creationism rests entirely on misleading half-truths, outright misrepresentations, and grossly flawed logic. It also relies on narcissism, conspiracy theories, and a persecution complex. So let's end this with the always charming Ben Stein. In the beginning, there was design. There was a plan. And uh, that seems to be ignored. Well, of course, if you even said that in a university now, you'd probably be shot. Gosh, I haven't shot any creationists in ages. But hey, that's all for now. I'll just mention that if you like this stuff, maybe you should subscribe down below. And maybe you should leave a comment suggesting what you'd like to hear me talk about next. And also, I'll mention I've got a blog where you could read blog entries from a Minnesota professor with a squid fetish. It's all scientific, just weird.